Hi, Stephen. Hey, how you doing? Um, yeah, I'm, you know, pushing through. Pushing through? Come on, you're usually on fire, fired up and ready to go. <laughs> What's happening? Well, I, I mean, Stephen, this is, I'm so tired of not being able to go anywhere or do anything. I'm, I'm being so cautious. I'm trying to follow directions, but it's just, there's so much going on and, and you'd think I'd be getting all the work in the world done being here, but it's just really hard to focus. And so I just, I don't know. I thought the same thing. We're working from home. I'll get so much done. I get all my exercise in. I'm just zoom, 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 slack, 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 zoom. Then it's 10 o'clock at night. I, so absolutely. I, I haven't, I, I don't think, I used to go to yoga three times a week and, and you'd think I would have been doing it every day, but every day there's something that I feel like I have to get done. And then the week rolls up and I look back and I think, oh my gosh, what did I actually do? Hey, you know, one thing I found, you got to somehow figure out how to make this a little fun. Do you have your mask? You see, I have a I, I mask. I do. Um, oh, I, I have mine in, in the other room, but yeah. So you need something funny. You need something to lighten the load. You should understand that not all of us are starting to get a little tired of this stay at home. And it's going to have an impact, but it's okay to at least talk about it. Are you talking to anybody about uh, the challenge? Um, well, I mean, no. I, I, you kind of opened that door now, which I appreciate, but... I just don't feel like, I feel like everybody's got so much on their plate and, you know, most of the people on our team are home and they've got kids and spouses and everybody, everything's going on. They're so busy. And I feel like, who am I? Who am I to feel like I'm overwhelmed when I'm just, you know, I'm, it's just me. Well, you know, um, I think that it's a very uh, difficult transition and a lot of the time that we spend in the office, you know, the team's really pretty tight and we like each other. So this can be a little bit difficult. And I think it's okay to talk about it. I can just hear in your tone of your voice that it, uh, I can hear the stress. Maybe you can even hear it in mine. So we need to figure out some ways that we um, are physically distant, follow the guidelines, but socially connected. In some ways, think about it. I've never been to your house, but I'm looking at your place. It's great. Um, well, thanks. I, you know, I've got this screen up because I don't want you to see what's on the other side of it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I fashioned the best that I could because it, it said that it was better to actually go on camera and be seen for Zoom calls. So I'm trying, yeah. but I don't always feel like <laughs> putting on makeup or feeling like I want to be camera ready all the time. So um, how might we make uh, being on Zoom a little more fun? Uh, not so well, much. I don't know, I, because I there's so much work to be done. I just feel like, I feel like we got to get right to the point. I, I never feel like I'm allowed or not allowed, but I just don't feel like it's appropriate to take that extra time because time is money and we got to get work done. Well, you know, um, we got to get work done, but we have to do it smart and we're not going to get there if we kind of don't take care of ourselves. And um, maybe I need to do a better job of uh, making it okay for us to take care of each other and to take care of ourselves. Uh, we're on Zoom a lot, we're on Slack, we're doing emails, but how, how would you feel about getting an actual card in the mail? Wow, I, I don't think I've gotten anything but junk mail <laughs> in forever. And I'm wondering I mean, if- we... I, I had a birthday a couple of months ago and I, I got one card. <laughs> well, you know, you know, we have these production schedules and timelines and, 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 you know, the pandemic has thrown everything kind of up in the air and 
and um, we're all challenged to meet the same benchmarks and kind of productivity that we did before the pandemic. And so, you know, your numbers don't look like they used to and um, understandable. Uh, but the fact is that when you look outside, it looks like a normal, perfect day. And yet there's a deadly virus out there that has resulted in us having to literally, literally change our lives. I'm wondering if you've learned any lessons so far that we should take forward into the future. Is there anything that you've learned in this, in this phase we're in right now, this stay at home, this work from home, this Zoom, Slack, Slack, Zoom? Are there any lessons that we should take with us when we return to whatever the new future will be? Wow, that's, that's a really great question, Stephen. I think that, I, I think I've learned that human connection is important. I always considered myself a loner that, you know, you know me, I'm not up, I don't go out and hug people in the office, but to have just not had physical contact for what is this, a couple of months now, it seems very bizarre. And, and so I think I've learned that where I thought I didn't need that, I do. And, and then I have in the last week started taking some walks and just stepping away and trying to get some fresh air and stepping outside. And, and I think I'm trying to learn how to balance work life, even though I thought that when I was all by myself, you know, like I said, I should be getting tons of things done and yet I get distracted. I went, I went, I started cleaning out my closet the other day and didn't send a single email. Oh my goodness. And I know you probably felt bad about that. I, I think horrible. Yeah, I really have to do a better job and communicate to central administration that we have to model that balance. And maybe, um, you know, um, we go from the informal water fountain conversations in the office all the way then to something more formal like employee assistance programs. Is, is there anything in between that you think could be helpful? Wow, um, I, I don't know. I mean, there's, we've, we've been communicating, I feel like we've been on Slack. Um, I just don't, I'm trying, you know, and I read what other people put in and I laugh at the jokes, but it, I just, I'm not feeling, I just don't quite feel myself right now. Well, a lot of us may have that same feeling. I think we have to be a lot more tolerant with one another, but I'm wondering, do you, do you have a mentor? Um, not currently. Do you have a tour mentor? <laughs> <laughs> Very funny. Uh, no, only my upstairs neighbor when they walk too hard on the floor. That's my only tour mentor. Well, I'm thinking that maybe one of the things we should do in addition to our Zoom, Zoom, Slack, Slack, is to have a happy hour in one of those where we just come together and share information about how we're getting through the day. And do you have a playlist? Do you have a stay at home playlist yet? No. It might be interesting to uh, have people uh, build a, uh, share the, uh, a couple of songs from their playlist that they're using and create our own little playlist. Something that keeps us emotionally engaged with one another. I like that. Something that uh, sort of, something that, that motivates each of us, <laughs> you know, what, what I need to do to motivate. You know what, I'm going to pop a little note for myself right here. Here we go. Hey, listen, I know, uh, speaking of, you've got another Zoom call and so do I. So thank you so much for this time, Stephen. You have been great. You make it a great day. Great job, Stephen. All right, we're going to take just a moment. Uh, share with me what felt good about that conversation, what you thought you did well. Well, I totally, hopefully disarmed her. Uh, from the anxiety that the conversation was going to be punitive and corrective and giving her criticism. So I wanted to completely disarm her. I wanted to um, uh, evoke the shared 
anxiety of the time we're in, that we're all experiencing it, and there's no need to hide that. And, um, and then recognize that the world we left in the pre-pandemic phase is not the world we're gonna go back to. In fact, we shouldn't go back at all. We should go forward. And what lessons has she learned about herself during this time period that we should take forward? I, I thought that was a really great question, Stephen. You did a beautiful job of the eye contact, the calm demeanor, showing caring and understanding within your voice and your body language. And I thought that that was a particularly great question of helping her to find the positive or something that she has gained or learned from this it was very nicely done. Very quickly, is there anything you would do differently next time? Well, you see, I threw the EPA in at some point as a extreme and wondered from her what might be in between that. If we had a longer conversation, I would get back to that to say, to what extent um, is the employee assistance program seen as a stigmatizing uh, intervention or seen as a sign of weakness? I, I would get try to draw her out there. And then how might we reframe the employee assistance programs in ways that minimize that kind of stigma? Mm -hmm. Interesting, because the only constructive criticism I had was that it sort of felt that that question made it seem like that EPA is an extreme that we don't want to go to by asking what what can we do without having to go there almost by what's in the middle. And I think just that that confirmation of there's nothing wrong with that and it's there if you need it and it's completely private, but now let's see if maybe there's something you want to try in between, but just removing that stigma with the question. Thank you. You did a fantastic job, sir. Thank you so much. Really, Man, that was so much fun. Plus, I know I couldn't hurt anybody. <laughs>